In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we have a wonderful gospel message. It's the calling of Peter. And it ties into our theme here, our campaign that we're going through with the church of life's healing choices of not taking control of our lives on our own, but letting God in. Letting God in to take, his, take control. Here we have St. Peter and the disciples washing their nets after a long day. They toiled all night, caught nothing. And Christ comes along and he's speaking to the people. And he says, Simon, can I speak from your boat? He says, go ahead. And at the end, he says, Simon, let's go out for a catch. And Simon looks to Christ, and I could imagine what he's thinking. He's saying, Lord, look, I'm the expert fisherman. I know what I'm doing. I just went out. I spent all night. I didn't catch anything. But sure, just because you say, so we'll go. They go out. He says, launch out into the deep. They go into the deep. They throw the nets. And they catch so much fish that they have to get a second boat and both boats begin to sink. After that, he kneels down before God and says, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And then he says, follow me. It's important to understand this is not the first time that Peter was called. This is actually the second time that Christ had seen Peter and told him to follow him. If you read in the Gospel of St. Mark, it says he saw Simon and Andrew and he told them, come follow me. It says they left their nets immediately, left all and followed him. And he says, now you will be fishers of men. And I think they did it for a little bit. And then reason came to their mind. This doesn't make sense. To follow you, who's going to feed my wife? Who's going to feed my children? How are we going to do it? It just doesn't make sense. And when you pay attention to the exact wording of the passage, it was as if St. Peter and the disciples were cleaning their nets just away from the people. Christ was doing his thing with the people and they were doing their own thing. It was as if Peter came to the realization that this isn't going to work. How many times have we come before the Lord and we feel like He's calling on my heart and He's leading me closer to Him and I decide, all right, that's it. And I drop everything and I follow Him. And then I say, you know what? This isn't practical. I can't be a fanatic. I'm still at least, I'm sure St. Peter is thinking, I'm still at least a disciple of St. John the Baptist. He's a prophet. You're a prophet. Everything's fine. You do your thing or I'll do, uh, I'll do my own thing and then we'll meet up every once in a while. I'll come to church on Sundays. I'll be part of the campaign. I'll be part of a small group. I'll take quiet time in the morning. Sure. But to forsake all, Lord, it's too much. And here St. Peter was trying to take control of his own life. He was trying to say, I know what's best in my own life. I've got the answers. And Christ came back again and says, Peter, I want you to follow me. I'm not going to accept the half-hearted way of following. I'm not going to accept you just doing your own thing and you convincing yourself that you're following me. I'm going to ask you again, Peter. I want you to follow me. And we see that in this passage, again, he left everything, forsook all and followed him. When you read the Vespers Gospel, it was when the Pharisees came to ask for the temple tax from Christ and Peter. St. Peter checks his pockets and says, Lord, I'm following you. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. And so Christ tells Peter, go over there. You're going to find a fish with a coin in its mouth. Grab the coin and pay the tax. That's for me and for you. I'm going to cover everything that you need. I'm going to cover your expenses. I'm going to take care of all your concerns. You're with me, right? You forsook all to follow me, then leave it up to me. I'm going to take care of everything that you need. 
But that was after he had fallen. This passage, when he's being called, he thinks, I can do it myself. What happened? He toils all night and catches nothing. Peter, what do you have to show for, for the control of your life? What do you have to show for all that you're doing on your own? You thought you can go, you can be a great fisherman. You toiled all night and caught nothing. But that day he left all, forsook all and followed him. And what does it mean to, for, to forsake all and follow him? There's another passage in the Gospel of Luke where he says, whoever does not forsake all cannot be my disciple. Really? That extreme Lord? You want us to be fanatics or what? What is this? Before, and before that part, he says, he who does not hate father and mother and wife and children and fields for my sake, and even his own life also is not worthy of me. They're saying, if you want to follow me, if you want to be in the school of Jesus, you got to be in it to win it. you got to be ready to give it all, to forsake all, that even when the pressures of life and the love of the world love and love of others takes over, you say no. My identity is in Christ. I began to think, I wonder if St. Peter one day later on in his life began to look back and think, I should have just stayed a fisherman. I could have been a rich fisherman. I was a good fisherman. I probably could have caught a ton of fish. I wonder if he ever regretted. Well, let's look at his life and see what was it that Peter got to see when he forsook all to follow Christ. He was one of the few people in the room when Christ went in to visit Jairus' daughter, and Christ raised her from the dead. He got to witness this with his own eyes. But then, yeah, maybe other people got to see it, nothing special. So, he even got to witness Christ raise Lazarus from the dead. And he even got to cast out demons. God gave him the power to cast out demons and to heal the sick and to do wonderful things. I wonder if he regretted leaving all to follow Christ. Even greater than that. He climbed the mountain of transfiguration and saw Christ in all of His glory. Even to a point where he didn't know what to say. He was just saying anything that came out of his mouth. Any dumb thing that came out of his mouth, he would say it because was, it was so amazing. He got to see the glory of Christ. He forsook all. He went and witnessed with his eyes the empty tomb. And then on that wonderful day of Pentecost, God used him to be the founder of the church in which by one sermon, he converted 3,000 men. We can assume maybe eight, 10,000 people converted that day. All by him, his first sermon, he was able to found the church. Now I wonder if Peter could look back and say, I wish I should have been a fisherman. It would have been great. How many of us are holding on to Hagat Haif? Foolish things. Because we're content just being fishermen. We're content just being in control of our life. Okay, go ahead. But there's going to be many days where you're going to toil all night and you're going to catch nothing. And you're going to realize that maybe there was something more. Christ gave him another chance. Christ said, let me into your boat. Let me into your life. But not just let me into your life. Launch out into the deep. I want to go deep with you. I want to have a deep, personal, private, powerful, abundant life relationship with you that you're never going to be able to even imagine of before you see it. Launch out into the deep. Take me with you. How many of us have gone out into a deep, intimate, personal life with Him? Maybe you're one of the crowds listening while Christ is preaching from the boat. But St. Peter was in the boat, goes out into the deep. And when he entered into the deep with the Lord, at that point, is that he caught so much fish that not his boat, not his friend's boat, every boat was starting to sink. In the book of Malachi, when the prophet Malachi was talking about, to the people about tithing, 
And he's talking about tithing, and I think tithing in our understanding is wrong. Tithing in our understanding is just 10%. But back then, it was at least 23%. How is that? So every year, they would have to give 10% to the Levites. And then they would have to give 10% on one of the feasts. And then they would have to give 10% every three years for the poor. On top of the first fruits and the, the, the first lamb and all this stuff they had to give. So it was around 23% that they would have to give every year. And the Prophet was rebuking them because they were not tithing in this way. And for the first time, God says, try me. Just try me. He says, try me now in this. That if I do not open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there's not enough room to receive it, try me now in this. You're never going to regret. But you have to follow. You have to find that you even lose your own identity. Imagine Peter, until now, wherever the gospel is preached, all over the world, people know, pe people know Peter as a fisherman. Peter know that every, when you think of the word fisherman, the first mu word that comes to your mind is Peter. But imagine Christ is coming to him again and saying, Peter, are you going to follow me or not? I'm going to ask you one more time. I want you to follow me, but I really want you to follow me. None of this come and hear my sermon stuff, no. We need to go out into the deep. You need to lose yourself in me. You need to lose your identity in me that when people think of you, they think of me. How are you at work? Are you the person at work when people think of a God-fearing person, somebody that's life is hidden in Christ, they think of this guy at work. They think of you or at school. Are you the person in your house or in your work or in your school or in your surroundings or in your city that this is the person that has forsook all doesn't care about the love of the world the love of possessions the love of riches doesn't care about that stuff this person's identity is found in Christ when problem comes they've surrendered it to Christ because Christ is the one that takes care I've left everything I have nothing he's the one in charge He's in charge of my finances. He's in charge of my social life. He's in charge of my emotions. He's in charge of my problems. He's in charge of everything. I've forsaken all. And I find my abundant life in Him. Have you found that abundant life? And that you can tell God, Lord, I've tried you. And truly, you've opened up the windows of heaven and poured out so much blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. Are you living that life? Because I believe only the disciples, only the people that forsake all, those are the ones that become his disciples, those are the ones that are in the school of, of Jesus, and those are the ones that see abundance. He got to see the glory of Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. I don't think he ever regretted it. I remember me and my wife, we were... We felt like God was calling us to move to, to Africa. We were praying and fasting years, and finally, we had put some conditions before God and some signs before God. And they were really specific and narrow, and we, we knew that if this happened, then God is telling us to go. It happened one Saturday that this sign was answered, and I remember Saturday night that we were saying, okay, khalas, that's it, we're going to go. Leave work, leave family, this own family. All this stuff we had to do. And we went. And I remember the next morning, after we had made this decision, this was the gospel. And the person that was preaching that day was saying, let your children give it all for him. Let, you should give it all. Everybody should leave everything for him because he's the greatest. I don't think Peter ever regretted for one second. I don't think he ever regretted for one second submitting it all to him. I remember being in the pews that day and looking across as the preacher was saying this, looking at my wife and saying, he never regretted. 
We have a living example of somebody that never regretted. I'll tell you though, sometimes we get weak. You know, this wasn't the last time that Christ told Peter to follow him. After the resurrection, we all know that he had denied Christ. He went to the tomb, saw the empty tomb. Christ appeared in the room of the disciples. And then he left, said, peace be with you. Peter said, you know what? I don't know how we're going to survive. I'm going fishing. And all the disciples said, we're going with you. He goes fishing and then sees Christ on the shore. We know the famous discourse between Christ and Peter when he says, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, I love you. And three times. And at the end, he says, when you were younger, you went where you wanted. But now that you are old, you will be taken by the hand and you will go to a place of which you don't want to go or of which you don't know. And at that point, Christ said it one more time. He said, Peter, follow me. Give it all. Have I not shown you? And it's important that when we pay attention to the Matins reading, it says, go, the, the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that he is risen. Go tell Peter so that he never doubts for one second that you are following the risen Lord. When you leave it all, you forsake the love of so many sins and habits and hang-ups and things, and you submit it to him, and you say, Lord, you take control. I'm no longer going to be a fisherman. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. At that point, you're going to find healing. You're going to find power. You're going to find glory. You're going to find the abundant life. You're going to see God as the God who provides. And I believe it. But there's some stuff that we're holding on to and we're just not convinced. Christ loves you so much and He's not content. Maybe with the half-hearted way that we follow Him, He's going to say one more time, Hey buddy, are you going to follow me or not? Follow me. I'm asking you one more time, follow me. And I'm going to keep asking because I'm not going to be content with a half-heart. I'm going to be content with a life that is hidden in Christ. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed are 